This is kind of uh, very close to um, the original uh, uh, tie of a, a, a Royal Wolf uh, parachute, and I'm going to kind of I'm, I'm going to kind of mess it up just a little bit, not very much, uh, but I'm just going to kind of tie it the way I, I I'm tying them. Uh, so this is on a size 14. I kind of like the size 14. I have tied them down uh, to a size 16 here somewhere. Do I got the right one? Yeah, this is a size 16. So I don't know if you can see it very well or not. But So that's the size 16. So it can be tied down somewhat smaller. I don't know, but do you go any smaller than 16, Mike? No, no, I didn't think so. I, so anyways, what I'm going to do is I, I like a straight-eyed hook. Um, so I use a Daiichi uh, 1110. That's my favorite dry fly hook. And we'll have to take the barb off. And a lot of this was tied with... Uh, good bulky hair because uh, Mr. Wolf wanted it to float in Western waters because Western waters were quite a bit rougher than uh, than uh, the Eastern streams. I haven't used this device in a while, so bear with me. Um, I'm using 18 knot nano thread. I kind of like it for my dry flies. It's not bulky at all. So um, I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on it. That's kind of my base for most of my flies anymore, just to make sure the thread stays where I put the thread and the materials. Right on here. Now, for the last little while, I've uh, I've been using curved scissors. I kind of kind of like them. I uh, found my old Pettijohn scissors, and uh, now another question for you: Has any of you guys read uh, the new Clink Hammer book? It is fantastic, and some of the things I'm going to do tonight are based from that book. Um, it's a very good book if you get a chance to read it. I, I, I advise the club to buy it if they can. It's called Clink. Uh, it's a very, very good book. Very thick. It's all me really thick. But anyways, the one thing that I got from it, when he's doing his wings, he actually uses um, predator fiber from uh, Simperfly. He's using that for his wings. So this is Simperfly. You can get it in umpteen different colors. So... I mean, it's not that expensive, and you got enough winging material here, here to last you forever, almost in one one batch. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a chunk of that, and I do make it fairly heavy. So I'm going to put this somewhere in the half to two thirds of the length of the uh, the hook hook shank, and I'm going to tighten it down. Keep it right on top if you can. Tighten it down with the 18. You can do a couple extra wraps, and then the key is when you cut cut this off or trim it off, trim it off angled with the the hook shank. And that way you get kind of an even taper when you put extra thread in there. And then what you're gonna do is come back here. And I just kind of wrap it down here. 
And I'm going to pull him there like that. Put a bit of a dam there for now. And then I'm going to stop right there. And then I'm going to use a little bit of deer hair. I thought this was elf, but it's pr I'm pretty sure it's deer hair now. And I'm going to just take a just a minimal amount. Trim that off. Whoops. That where I can get at it. Then I'm going to pull the loose hairs out of it. Take my hair stacker. Tap that down. And we're gonna pull that out. So now you got your, your tail. So what I do is, is I take this and I try and do it roughly the length of, or again, the length of the, the shank of the hook, or maybe just a little bit longer. And then what I do is I take my other here like this. And what I do is bring that over there, bring that down so it's on top. Whoops. And then try not to hook that. Keep an eye on it because... Periodically, you will end up with a a thread in there caught on your hook. And I'm just going to pull those hairs up. A guy could likely measure it and then cut the hairs off and do it that way too. See, I'm learning on the go too. Trim that off, put that down there so it's not too far away. And out of the way. And then I'm just gonna tie that down a bit. Then I'm gonna come back to the back. Now, a lot of times I'll just use a peacock dubbing, but I've actually got some peacock here that I can, I'm actually gonna use. This actually makes it look Pretty nice, actually. So I got a peacock eye. Uh, it's a, little, a lot fluffier, right closer to the eye. So I, it's kind of nice. So with it being as small as it is, I only use two pieces. The one thing to make sure is when you have the, the, the pieces off, I cut it back quite a ways, put near an inch, uh, maybe even a little bit farther, because the tips are actually quite fragile on the peacock. We'll just trim that off there. And I'm gonna put that. Whoop, I lied. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, okay, never mind. I just had a brain in there and aneurysm there. And we're gonna tie that back there like that. And then we're gonna come back up here. Then what we're gonna do is wrap this. I do it three or four times right here. And then we're gonna come back. And then I'm not gonna cut it yet. I'm just gonna bring it back here. And I did mess up just a little bit, but we can save it. Stop there. Should have did this one, this move a little bit earlier. And then you're going to Bring that over here, tie that off there, like that. 
And come back here. And then you're going to take some red floss. And just so it'll lay down a little bit better and it's not so uh, so fibery, I just kind of moisten it up. I have in there like that. We're going to put that there. And then we're going to take this guy here. Try that off again. I uh, I was fishing with Urban uh, last week uh, on the little smoky and. He put a, a royal wolf on me, spanked my backside with it. <laughs> and what you're going to do is take that tag, and I'm going to do a couple of turns in front, or in behind, I should say, I guess. And then we're going to bring it over. Do a couple of turns in front. I can almost get away with three, I think. I'm gonna tie that off there like that. And put four or five wraps in the front like that. Now I'm done. My life. I like to do my parachutes. I tip my tip my hook. That way, now when I wrap it, I'm wrapping it just normally because it's on a hook shank. So we'll take my thread again because it's an 18. It's uh, works out pretty good. Now, the one thing uh, Mr. Quinkhammer had to say, he uh, usually does his wings a lot bigger than we, I do. He actually puts them out pretty big. He he likes them fairly long. And he also soaks his wing material in uh, Flyagra or something like that too, right? So and he's he does that too with a lot of his um dubbings when he's doing dry flies. He'll soak it overnight in in some kind of a float and let it dry out, and that's what he does with his dubbings. So I thought that was kind of a neat idea. So I'm going to make this post up a little bit.
I'm using uh, Ernest Ackle, and I try and get it at least a size or almost two sizes bigger than than the, the, the gap of the hook. This cape's a little hard finding that size, but uh, there are the odd one. Yes, I should have picked one out. I had one this morning when I was tying. But... There's one. Okay, so what I found out too with that book was I used to just tie it on, wrap it around, concave down, and talking or reading his book, he actually says to do it the other way with the shiny side on the water because the finish is the the dry, the part that helps the the feather float. It it's raw water a little water repellent. Uh, the water runs off. It's tougher and all that kind of stuff. So, what I've done now is is I tie it with the shiny side down and I wrap with the shiny 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 side down. Okay, and that way it, it cups like this, so it actually sits a little bit lower in the water too. Okay. And he says that there's no number of wraps. It's up to how you feel about how many wraps you put on. You don't have to have four wraps, five wraps. It's what you feel comfortable with, what you think will float the fly. So there's times I put four or five, and there's times I put six or seven. So I'm not... Uh, I don't count, I just make it look like the way I want it to look. What I do is put it on and I'll actually wrap likely a couple of wraps ahead right here. And then somewhere along the line, I will just slide it down and then I will start working it down to the, to the base. And I will oh. I do about three turns. I've been trying to change my habit of, of tying it off. I usually tie, tie off at the top. I've been trying to tie off at the bottom, but I still feel very uncomfortable when I tie off at the bottom because I think I'm picking up some of the fibers uh, and causing them, well, I've got some of this pointing down already. And so uh, to stop that, I, I think I'm gonna go back to tying it off the top. And it's not as hard as it sounds, as long as you've got the, the, the base there. And especially when you're using uh, 18 knot or smaller, you're not gonna get that much of a fibers being pulled down. And you can see that I, like I said, just about too short on the, on the, on the wing.
Well, there you go. That's kind of the royal wolf parachute. I realize I don't understand the difference between a royal wolf and a royal coachman. The materials, mostly. And the royal coachman is usually tied um, with duck quill and um, golden pheasant crescent. Yeah. 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 They're a little bit more delicate. So the, the royal wolf is, is built for western streams, rough water. It'll float better than than uh, a royal coachman.